Hi everyone, Tim Brown. Welcome to My Apple Podcast. For this episode, Mavericks. With Mavericks, Apple introduced a lot of really nice features. And you're beginning to see more and more a closer integration of the iOS operating system and the OS for the desktop. Now, Apple boasts over 200 features, and they are correct. Just accessibility alone has a ton of features. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the highlights. Okay, so let's begin with Safari. So Safari, when you open up a browser, you get the top sites view. This enables you to access top sites like iCloud, Apple, Yahoo, and so forth. You can also customize pages as well, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in a bit. Let's go ahead and open up a couple windows, because I wanna show you the tab browsing feature. So when you click on the plus button in the top right-hand corner, that opens up another window, and you can just browse through tabs. That's nothing new, of course, but this is a great, easy, and efficient way to keep track of all your web pages. So I'm just going to pull up three. Now, one thing that's nice about tab browsing, it's very similar to what you'll find in the use of Finder windows with Maverick, which I'm going to show you in a little bit, is that you can move your tabs around. So you can reorder your windows however you want to do it, which is really nice. There's also another little additional icon on the far right at the top. This enables you to browse your windows in a minimized mode. And you just use two fingers on your trackpad to browse back and forth, which is a really nice feature. You don't always have to click on that button either. You can actually use two finger pinch in to do the same thing. Two scroll, two finger scroll to browse through, and then pinch outwards with two fingers to return. So that's a really nice feature to have as well. You can also customize your toolbar. Again, nothing really new, but it's a nice feature to have with Maverick. So you go to view, customize toolbar, and then you can add all the icons that you want to the header up above to improve your workflows. Some of the icons that I really like is I like the option to have a print button because I often like to save my windows to a PDF format, which is a really nice option to have. I also like to be able to save clippings to my dashboard, and I'm going to show you that in a little bit. And I like the ability to save pages to my reading list, or now you have the option to email them, send to messages, Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, which is really nice. So social media integration is really the best it's ever been with Mavericks. Now you will notice that your top sites are provided to you by default. You can add your own top sites to the top sites page if you want. So here are my current top sites, and I wanna make Mac World one of my top sites. What you do is you double click and highlight the address in the address bar and then drag it to the top sites icon, which is the grid icon, and release. And then when you go to check, you'll see that it has been saved to your top sites board. So that's a nice, quick, and easy way to save sites to top sites manually. Now, another nice feature I want to share with you is the shared links feature under the bookmarks tab. So I'm gonna go ahead and open bookmarks. And you'll see here that on the right hand side, well I have bookmarks, I have my reading list, and then there's shared links. With shared links, you can keep track of all of your Twitter posts, which is really nice. And all of your shared accounts, really. So in addition to Twitter, you can tell these are Twitter posts because the Twitter icon appears next to the names. So actually, here's a post by Walt Mossberg. I can go ahead and click on that, and it will open right in the window. So whatever the story is that Walt Mossberg is posting, I can now access that straight in the browser without, a, without even having to go to Twitter, which is really nice. And you can keep scrolling down, and you'll see that you'll get other kinds of updates as well that are related to your social media sites. In this case, I have a lot of my LinkedIn posts. So this is a great way to stay connected with all of those who you communicate with on your social media sites. The feature is nice because it complements all the other features that come with Mavericks. For example, when you do a two finger scroll across the right side of your trackpad, you can also bring in your notifications, which is another way to stay updated on everything that's going on. Just take two fingers again to swipe back. So with notifications on the right hand side and shared links within Safari, you're connected all the time and Maverick still comes with 
the reader mode, which I really love, ever since it was introduced, just click on reader and you can read your articles as if they're in a PDF format. Very clean layout, elegant, beautiful design. Absolutely love this feature, always have. Now, another thing I really like about shared links is that this is activity that's happening in real time. For example, let me go ahead and pull up another browser window and I'm gonna go to my website my Apple podcast and I'm going to go to the blog page and I'm going to find an article to post on my Twitter page. I'm going to go ahead and repost pencil for paper, which is a short little short little blog post that I created not too long ago. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the share tab along the top and I'm going to post this to Twitter. Yeah, I love the graphics here too by the way. And I'm just going to type in here my Apple podcast update and I'm going to click send. Now I'm going to go ahead and right click on the shared links and just click update shared links. And you'll see there's my post along with several other recent posts. So it's a great way to stay connected. Now another thing I like is the ability to share clippings to your dashboard. So let me go ahead and exit out of a bookmark for a moment and let's just say I want to save this to dashboard. I just click on this icon which I save to my header bar and I'm going to go ahead and click add and this now adds that clipping to my dashboard which is really nice. Now what's also nice too about Dashboard is that it's no longer a static window on the left hand side of your window displays. For example, let me go ahead and do a three finger mission control. I can actually move my dashboard anywhere around. No longer has to be flush left. I can move it anywhere I want, which makes it an integral part of your workflows, which is really nice. Okay, let's go ahead and explore the notes application next. Notes is another new feature added to Mavericks, and you can sync your notes on your iOS devices to your desktop. This is a really nice feature to have. So let me go ahead and open the Notes application on my iPhone, and you can see that my notes correspond with the notes on my desktop. Now one thing you'll notice too is that the title of this particular article is green. So I actually go in on my desktop and add bold text and I can change the font as well as the color on the desktop and it will transfer to the iPhone version. This is really nice. So here's an example. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bold this text. Bring up the, the format window. I'm going to go ahead and make this font bold. And I'm going to go ahead up above and change the color of this font to red. Now I'm going to go ahead and open Staff Retreat on my phone and you can see it's updating already. Bring it over and what do you know? The font has been changed and I now have color fonts and bold fonts on my iPhone. You will also notice too with the Notes application that you can add folders. So I'm going to control click on Notes and just add new folder. And I'm just going to call it Meetings. And now I can drag any note from this column to that folder. And I can access those notes that way. And this should update on the phone as well. So you can see that now on my phone, folders appears in the, in the top left corner. So if I go back to folders, I can now select that new folder meetings that I set up where I have those two notes organized. And of course, notes can be launched full screen. And it looks beautiful full screen. And you can also change the size of your font. So I can go ahead, I'm going to control click and bring up my font window. And I'm just going to go ahead and enlarge the font because it looks better on the larger screen. What's going to happen is you're going to see some adjustments on the phone as a result of this font change. So let me go ahead and minimize my window here, bring the phone back up. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up this Sharf article or notes. 
And you can see that actually the text has been adjusted to coincide with the change in the text on my desktop. Okay, I very briefly want to talk about iPhoto for a little bit. iPhoto deserves its own episode, so I'm going to save that for the future. One thing I really love is that iCloud is integrated into iPhoto, so you can get your photos from your phone or your iPad almost instantly. So for example, let's go down to iCloud where it says shared. I'm going to open up my streams. And here I can access all the photos that I've added to my camera roll, including all these collages that I made with Bizarre. Now just to show you how this works, I'm going to go ahead and pull up my camera on my phone and I'm going to take a picture of my computer screen. I know this is weird. I'm like, I'm taking a picture of myself taking a picture. And that's going to save that to my camera roll. Let's go ahead and open up the Photos app. And as you can see, that photo has been added to my camera roll. Now let's go ahead and check out iCloud. I'm going to go ahead and click on Events. And then I'm going to come back to iCloud once again. Click on Photo Stream. Now I'm going to go ahead and wait a few moments for iCloud to update. And as you can see, the photo showed up in my iCloud stream. And now I can add that to my photo album. I love this feature because now I can access my photos immediately from my iOS devices without having to use another third-party service say like Dropbox. Another one of my favorite applications that comes with Mavericks is the new Maps application now made for the desktop. And just like your iOS devices, you get these beautiful vector graphics. What you're looking at here is a view of downtown Philadelphia where I used to live. So I'm very familiar with this area. And you're looking at City Hall here and the Twin Towers over here to the top left. And let me just take you through this area so you can see how the Maps app works. So I'm going to give you a little tour up JFK Boulevard and I'm going to take you to the Philadelphia Museum of Art. So when you get right here to where this circle is, this is a nice area to visit if you're ever, have, if you're ever in town. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here because you can actually visit the Franklin Institute which is right here and the Free Library and the Natural Science Museum. But let's go ahead and finish our tour. I'm going to take you to the Philip Museum of Art. Now you cannot see the Philip Museum of Art in flyover mode or in 3D mode. That doesn't matter because what I want to show you are some directions on how to get from the Philip Museum of Art to the Seaport Museum on the waterfront. So I'm going to go ahead and type in Philadelphia Museum of Art. So I did this before, so it saved it. And I want to go get some directions. I'm going to click on directions. I'm going to switch the location and I'm going to say Seaport Museum, which it should still have my settings here. Yes, it does. And the Seaport Museum is located along the waterfront and it's giving me driving directions for how to get there. So basically you're driving through Center City, Philadelphia. You can walk it if you want. It's a nice little hike, close to three miles and gives you walking directions. Pretty cool. Now the one thing that people really like about the Maps app is the ability to share your maps with your mobile devices. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make my window a little narrow here so I can bring up my phone and I'm going to go ahead and send my phone a message. I'll click the share button. I'm going to send these directions to my iPhone. And you see I get a message automatically, which is pretty amazing. And those directions show right up on my phone. Click start and I'm ready to go. And another big, huge feature that Apple introduced for iOS 7 and for Mavericks is iTunes Radio. And I have both of them on my computer right now because I want you to see just how well they sync together. I have iTunes Radio in iTunes on my desktop and next to it I'm mirroring my iPhone with iTunes Radio. And you can see it, the same stations on my computer or also on my phone, which is really nice. And to demonstrate how well the syncing really works, I'm going to go ahead and set up a new station. I'm going to go ahead and click the plus symbol and I'm just going to type in Miles Davis and it's probably going to generate a Miles Davis radio station. Okay, here's one. And it just added Miles Davis to my iTunes library. And look, iTunes was also added to my iPhone where the Miles Davis radio station was. Just that fast. That's how good the syncing 
works across devices and across platforms, which is really nice. Sorry about that. I was getting so mellowed out by the music. I forgot I was doing a podcast. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, I have a couple more features that I want to show you. I can't show you them all, obviously. I mean, 200 features, come on. But I'm going to show you two that I think you'll really like. So let me go into Mission Control. I'm going to go back to my notes application. And I want to use a few features that you can use in system preferences, or you can set up in system preferences. And one that I really like is the dictation option when using the notes application. So let's go ahead and just bring up system preferences and go to dictation and speech. Where it says dictation, you wanna turn that on. It's then gonna walk you through a few steps where you have to read a few lines so that the system can get accustomed to your voice. And once you're all set up, you can then use dictation with the notes application. Okay, we're now at the notes application. I'm gonna go ahead and hit a command in and start a new note. And I'm just gonna type in introduction. And I'm gonna enlarge this so that you can see it better on screen. I'm gonna double tap on the command key. My name is Tim Brown. And welcome to my Apple podcast, period. Pretty awesome. Exclamation mark. Well, it was very exciting to see Apple introduce iBooks for the desktop. I've been waiting forever and was wondering why they didn't introduce it sooner. We have it and that's all that matters. What's really nice is that all your books sync across all your devices, across all platforms. And it's a beautiful interface. For example, if I go ahead and open a book in my library here, you see it opens up all by itself. But what's nice is that you can open multiple books at one time. So for example, I can go back to library and open another book. And I now have two books open at once. Go back to library, open another book. I can have three books open at one time. So if you're studying for exams or what have you, no problem with iBooks there. And of course, all the note-taking features are there. Any text you highlight will show up as notes on the left-hand side, which is really nice. You can view your chapters, and you can always view your library. So it's really nice the way iBooks works on the desktop, and it syncs quite well with your mobile devices as well. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up my iPhone, go to Mission Control here, I'm gonna go to this next window here, and just bring this on over to this window. And let's put the iPhone right next to it. And I'm gonna go ahead and open the iBooks application. And you can see I have all of my books on my iPhone as well. So everything syncs wonderfully. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this one book here, color on my iPhone. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to the preface page. And I'm just going to go ahead and just highlight some text here on the first line. And I'm going to add a highlight. And I'm going to add a note to it. Just creating a test. And click Done. Let's go back to Library. Let's go ahead and open that same book on iBooks for the desktop. And you can see that highlight in the preface section shows up in the iBooks version instantly. And you can see the note that's attached to it. Just creating a test. So it's really convenient to have both iBooks for the desktop as well as for iOS devices. And, you, and as I mentioned before, you can read multiple books. It looks beautiful in full screen mode as well. And you can still access the larger font mode too if you ever want to increase the size. So for the desktop, that's really a good option to have. And swiping from page to page is just effortless. Looks really quite wonderful on the desktop.
and that is iBooks. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up by focusing on all the features that come with the Finder window, which are pretty awesome, by the way. So I have my picture folder set up right now, and I'm going to go ahead and locate a folder, my Apple Podcast. And what I want to demonstrate here is how to use tab browsing with the Finder window, as I illustrated earlier with Safari. So I'm going to take this iOS 7 folder that's inside this My Apple Podcast folder, and I'm going to just drag it to the plus symbol on the top right. And that opens up another tab. I'm going to go back to My Apple Podcast, and now I'm going to drag this Mavericks folder to the plus symbol on the top right. And now I have three tabs. And what's really nice is with the latter two folders inside the My Apple Podcast main folder, I would have to click back and forth to access them. Now in tabs, the hierarchy doesn't present a problem because I can access them equally, even though they're inside a main folder, which is really nice. That really helps with navigation. And let's just say, for example, you want to get out of the tab mode. You want to have separate windows. Well, you can just simply grab one of those tabs and just move it outside the finder window and release, and it becomes a separate window. And likewise with this other tab, I could take it outside, release, and it now becomes a separate window. So that's a really nice feature to have. And you can combine them once again. You can go to Window and Merge All Windows. And then right back into the tab view again. And I think one of the most exciting features introduced for Finder window is the ability to add tags to your photos. And this is very exciting. So for example, you can see I have some tags set up here on the left-hand column. And I'm going to go ahead and add some to the tags that I have set up. So I'm going to go back to my picture folder here and I'm going to locate a folder called Bizarre. This is a, an application I use all the time to create collages. And as you can see, I've been busy. I have a lot of collages here. I have no tags attached to them yet. I'm going to go ahead and select all and I'm going to go to edit tags up above and I'm going to click art. And I'm going to add another one. I'm going to add photos as well. So now all of those photos in the Bizarre folder are now tagged with the RM Photos tag. So now if I go down to Tags and select Art, all of those collages now show up. If I select Photos, all those collages show up. Pretty cool. Now let me go ahead and go to the Video folder for a moment. Now you can see here that I have six videos in this folder and I all have them tagged with the Video tag, which is purple. This is great. That means the tag feature is working. Now let's just say, for example, for some reason, I didn't want my videos to show up in search or through the tagging system. Well, you can actually set certain parameters to prevent that in system preferences. So, for example, if I go up to system preferences, you want to look for a spotlight. A spotlight is the tool that you use for searching your files. And then you're going to click on privacy. You can see, for example, I already have my extra storage set up to not search because I don't want to search for so many files. Likewise, let's just say, for example, I don't want to have to search my video folder. There's nothing in the video folder I really want to look for. So I'm going to hit the plus symbol and it's going to prompt me to locate the file or location that I want to prevent from being searched or tagged. And I'm going to select movies. I'm going to click choose. So now the movie folder has been added to privacy. And you can see the videos have disappeared. I can no longer tag anything that's in the movies folder. So it's nice being able to have this level of customization, particularly with a system that is robust as this. If I want to return the videos, of course, I can go back to System Preferences, go to Spotlight, Privacy, Remove Movies, and when I go back to Videos Return, to the video tags. Woo, man, that was a lot. I usually don't cover that much during an episode, but Mavericks is just so exciting. I wanted to at least show you some of the features that I particularly like, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in. You can always catch me at MalablePodcast.com. Until next time, see you later.